So I thought I'd do a quick little video on my process for ultrasound guided central lines. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find a suitable target. And my first choice is usually the left subclavian if it looks like a good target. Just looking to evaluate the target, the first thing we will see, and this is how I like to find this. Number one, I stick the probe in cross section of the clavicle and then I just slide inferiorly towards the feet to try to find subclavian vessels and in this case now this is a little bit of an unusual orientation of the anatomy but the first thing we see here is the artery and we'll play that forward and you should see that it's pulsing it has a thick wall it resists compression and then a little bit more caudad we identify the subclavian vein that's unusual oftentimes the vein will be more superficial than the artery. So this is just a good example of why using ultrasound is much better because if you were going with your normal landmarks you'd probably miss the vein in this case and you might even hit the artery. So then I just look at it in long axis so rotating a little bit to make sure it looks like a good target, there's good orientation, I'm gonna have a good approach to it. And that's pretty much it. I'll identify the vessel, make sure I line it up, and then I gotta go get all my stuff and prep sterile, you know, all the things we usually do. Now in this particular case I didn't have images of the needle actually puncturing the vein, but you can see here and what I'm doing is I'm following the wire to make sure that it goes where I want it to go. And I think I like this view of it a little bit better. Here's the wire, it tracks into the vein, and in this image here we're tracking it, there it is in the vein, and we track up into the IJ, we see we don't see a wire in the IJ, so that's an important step. And just again, here's the IJ, there's no wire here, so I feel good about dilating and continuing on with the procedure. If we slow that down, you can see as I move past the clavicle here, bring the probe back down with subclavian vessels, and it's a little tough, but we can see that wire heading towards the vein and giving us evidence that it is not in the artery, so we're safe to dilate and continue our procedure. And just one more quick look, going above and below the clavicle, it's not in the IJ. We see wire heading in to the subclavian vein right here. So we're okay to dilate and continue our procedure, which is what we do. So after the procedure is finished, and I feel pretty confident that one, the wire and the catheter did not dislocate into the internal jugular vein, for a final confirmation that we have venous placement, I will ask the nurse, or I can give a quick flush, and I'll look for bubbles in the right ventricle, so we see those bubbles here. This is our poor man's agitated contrast study. And I may look, lastly, and just confirm that there's pleural sliding, to rule out any pneumothorax as a complication of the subclavian central line procedure. So to summarize, one, identify the vein as a good target and make sure you like the approach and the target that you like. And my general algorithm is left subclavian is my first choice, then, I'm, then I check the right subclavian, then I may look at internal jugular and I may look at femoral. Uh, some folks out there like the supraclavicular approach. Um, I'm not opposed to that one, it's just not something that's I've built into my habits that much, um, but it definitely has its merits. During the procedure, I like to check the wire at each step, and then I also check the catheter to make sure it hasn't translocated or dislocated somewhere I don't want it before I've removed all my sterile prep and things, so I can address it um, before everything else is already sutured and, and taped into place. And then once the procedure is done, I check for confirmation of venous placement by doing a rapid flush and imaging the right ventricle to look for bubbles in the right side of the heart. Then I'll look for pleural sliding to rule out pneumothorax. So those are the things I do when I do a central line. Again, I like the left subclavian, that's my first choice, um, but then I move down through the other, other choices in the list. Give this a try next time you do a central line. I hope it helps and I'll talk to you soon.